Hello and welcome back to The Ground Perspective and in today's video I'm going to be continuing in the series of the different roles of infantrymen uh, and this one specifically will be covering the Grenadier. Uh, but before I, I talk about the kit in my typical fashion I'm going to talk about a couple problems that I see with it and just a couple uh, uh, food, food for thought things, right? So. The first like modern rendition of what we see with the 40 millimeter grenade launchers today would be the uh, M79, um, the grenade launcher that was used largely in uh, Vietnam uh, by Army and Marine units, I, I, I believe both, and it was used to really good effect. Um, the need for it arose because, you know, the rifle squad wanted to have a way to instead of throw hand grenades 40 meters, they wanted to be able to throw hand grenades 400 meters, right? And that's a really, uh, that's a real big capability that you can carry uh, within your squad. And so you would see those guys, um, there's lots of pictures, but they would have their launchers and they would have a 1911 and they would have, you know, a bunch of bunch of 40 mil grenades and a couple extra pistol mags, things like that, which was weird. I don't know how I would have felt if I was that guy that didn't have an M16, just had a 40 millimeter launcher. Um, but nevertheless, it was used to really good effect. And it was fine that he didn't have an M16 because he was with a whole squad that had M16s and M60s and everything that they could need, and he, he was able to focus on his you know, employment of the 40 millimeter. He had the 1911 for his own protection, but either way. Um, and then, you know, the next thing that you see would be like the M203, uh, came out a little bit after Vietnam, and that was kind of solved the problem of the, the Grenadier not having a rifle, because he now had an M16 with an M203 attached to uh, that he could fire uh, 5.56 five, or fire, fire the 40 millimeter all in one all in one package. Sounds really good on paper, but it introduced a couple problems for the guy that actually has to carry that. Um, one of them being that he has to carry two types of ammo. Uh, he has to carry, you know, in, in, in enough uh, rifle magazines to like still be an effective rifleman, but he also has to carry in enough HE to still be an effective. Uh, a, a grenadier so it really pluses up the amount of ammo that that guy has to carry uh, because you know you can't really sacrifice too many rounds of 556 five, and you really can't sacrifice a whole lot of 40 millimeter if you're going to be relied on to be the grenadier um, and then you see the m320 which is kind of a blend between the last two it's capable of being mounted to a rifle or it's capable of being in a standalone configuration. And some places do different things with it. They mount it to a rifle, some places do standalone. Um, but either way, you see that the Grenadier still has a rifle. Um, so again, that thing suffers from a lot of the same problems that the, M, that, uh, the M203 does. But if you use it in, in, in the standalone configuration, it also suffers from having some way to retain that thing to your body so it's not swinging around all over the place. So you have to come up with that too. And I'll talk about some solutions that, that I've seen for that. Um, the last thing that I'll talk about is the M32. Uh, to my knowledge, the, M, the M32 is only in use by the Marine Corps, uh, but I, either way, I'll talk about it. Um, the M32 is a six shot revolving grenade launcher that is, uh, you know, semi-auto, so, more or less, it's like the Apex Predator version of the M79. Um, it's really, it's a really awesome system, but there's some real significant draw, drawbacks to it. One of them is the bulk and weight. Uh, that thing fully loaded is quite heavy, and it's not really realistic to expect a, a rifleman to carry that thing and his rifle and still be like maneuverable. Um, I've, I've done it before. I know that that's what people do with it, but um, it's not really realistic. Uh, be honest with yourself, right? Like that thing sucks. 
So what a lot of times ha happens is uh, they load that thing up and they strap it to the top of their pack so they can get it out really, really quickly in the event that they're in contact. But that's a problem as well because, you know, the whole point of 40 millimeter is, you know, whoever can get their, their 40 millimeter out first, whoever can get their automatic, uh, their, uh, their weapons firing first, things like that is usually going to win the fight. Um, especially if it's six rounds on tap, like the M32 is, you know, just empty the cylinder. Um, but either way, the problem with it is, is you, that's going to take you time. To, when you get in contact, drop your pack, pull that thing out, all this time you're not firing your rifle because you're getting this thing out and you're also not firing your 40 millimeter because you're trying to get it out, right? So you're just totally out of the fight for, for that whole interaction and that's a problem. But, you know, if you were to use an M32, and this is just my opinion, I think that the M32 is probably capable of being used as a standalone weapon. As in, that guy would just have the, M the M32 and, and an M9, M17, M M18, be it whatever handgun that his unit is using. Um, but you run into the same problems that I talked about with the M79, so it's definitely um, something to think about. Uh, now, to touch on the current state of 40 millimeter. Um, a lot of guys train, or well, it's not really their fault, but they just don't get the opportunity to train with their 40 millimeter as much as they like might need. Um, and it's not that they're not accurate with it, like they can pick it up and hit targets with it, but they don't get like the dummy rounds and things like that when they go on patrol X, and they don't get, you know, the f they don't get the launchers all the time, you know, they only sometimes pull them out when they're like, when, when, when they're going to use them and things like that. And that's a problem because you're, you're, you, you set your gear up for training and what you should do is set your gear up for war and then train in it, you know, so you need to set your gear up in everything that you know you're going to carry in combat i.e. all these 40 millimeter pouches and things like that um, and then train in it and then that's when you get like the I can train around this, I can train through this type thing but if you do it the other way where you set your gear up for training because all you do is shoot uh, like short bay or rifle qualification things like that then you're not going to have any of these 40 millimeter pouches on, on your kit and when you get, get into actual war you're going to be forced to use the big sloppy belt that they give you to carry um, the 40 millimeter in and that thing sucks. Um, in addition to using that, it also takes away your ability to use a regular belt. Um, I know that people do it, I've seen people do it, but it's not comfortable. I know it's not comfortable. Um, comfort is important. So, you know, if you're a grenadier, you need to make sure that your shit is set up how it's gonna be when you're in a real scenario. Right. Um, I think that covers all of my spiel about it, but uh, in this video specifically, I'm going to be talking about the belt. All right. So I'm going to move my plate carrier over to the side here. Um, okay. So, like I kind of talked about with the 40 millimeter belt, usually what happens is um, guys don't have their gear set up ready to carry the, the 40 millimeter and then uh, they get issued the big belt that just holds grenades and that's the big two inch buckle. And that thing kind of sucks. If you were just using it, it's the only belt that you're wearing and you just need it to carry grenades, it works. I've seen grenades fall out of those belts all the time though. Um, but it takes away your ability to use a regular like pistol belt. And to me, that's really important because I don't want to put all of this stuff on my plate carrier. I want to spread load my gear a little bit and keep some stuff on my belt, keep some stuff on my plate carrier. But I, you know, with the additional responsibility of all the 40 millimeter shit like that. So um, that's why I think that you should do something like I'm, like I'm doing here, but I'll talk about what I'm doing. So the base belt is a Ferro Concepts Bison belt. 
Uh, I love the Bison Belt. If you're thinking about buying one, you should buy one. Um, they're really awesome. But I don't use the belt that comes with it. Reason being is that belt's just pretty flimsy. Um, and I like a much more rigid inner belt. So I use the Safe Life uh, inner belt. Um, it's much it's much more rigid. It's very rigid. So if you don't like rigidity, then you're probably really not going to like it. But either way, that's the belt that I use for it, and I like it a lot. Um, now, to cover what's on the belt. First thing is a glove hanger. Um, I don't know who makes it, but a lot of companies make this kind of thing. And I just use some mechanics fast fits on there, um, and they work out well for infantry tasks. They're Durable yet dexterous, um, you know, they're kind of padded, so you know, they're a little warm, things like that. But uh, they're just really good, good gloves, and they're really cheap, which is you know, why I like them and why a lot of people like them. <clears throat> now, come one, one over here, you'll see I have a hand grenade pouch. Now, hand grenade pouches are something that usually gets omitted from Grenadiers' kits. And I understand it to a degree, they're trying to free up space to carry their 40 millimeter and things like that. But if you can, you should really still carry hand grenades. Uh, they're important to a, a, any infantryman, regardless of your role. Um, in addition to like the arming distance of 40 millimeter uh, uh, the, the grenades is depending on the round, it's like 15 to 30 meters, depending on the round. And then I know that people are going to get in the comments and be like, oh, it's 18 to 36, it's 17 to 32. Like, I know, but, you know, about 15 to 30 meters, right? And if enemy is closer to you than that, that's within your 40 millimeter range, so you can't use it, but it's within your hand grenade range. So uh, definitely still should try to carry hand grenades. Uh, I've got one on my belt and I have another one on the plate carrier. <clears throat> Next thing, on my weak side, so I can do quick reloads with it, I have four LBT uh, 40 millimeter pouches. And I really like these pouches for a couple of reasons. Um, one, they have the stretchy bottom, so it allows you to kind of put some larger rounds in there in addition to it having this double form of retention here. So if you're using HE, you just use the Velcro and you snap on the bottom and it fits HE. Now there's some larger, taller rounds like the, like the star parachutes and things like that. And you can fit both of them inside of these pouches. So top snap or bottom snap. I really like the snap. When I was originally trying to find pouches, I wanted to get ones with buckles on it, but that was a little bit of bulk, and there isn't really good pouches with buckles on them that I, that I could find. So the snaps are really awesome. In addition, they're military surplus, so they're really cheap, um, and it allows you to carry uh, four on your belt with one inside your uh, tube, which makes five, right? Uh, in addition to the snaps, the reason why I wanted some really good retention on the belt line is because when I see when I see grenadiers use the belts, uh, the issued belts, they I see them lose grenades a lot, and maybe they're not using the belt right or whatever. But I think a part of it is definitely because your belt is rolling around in the dirt much more than your plate carrier is, things like that. So. It's real easy for those things to get caught, fall out, and you know, depending on the munition, if you lose an HE grenade, it's not that big of a deal. But if you lose a really important one, like a star parachute or a smoke grenade or something like that, then that might that might fuck you, right? So uh, I wanted to have some really good retention on the belt, um, and I got these ones here, which do that job very well. <clears throat> now, moving to the center. I have my LBT 9022 uh, IFAC pouch. Um, I really like this one for a couple of reasons. It's relatively thin, slimline. It doesn't bounce around when I'm running with it. And I really like the system that it has to ditch all of the gear. Uh, it's relatively old at this point. Like this is kind of like the way of the dinosaur uh, as far as IFAC pouches go. But 
Uh, it has a rip cord here, which you pull, you pull out, and then the bottom of the pouch comes open, and all of your IFAC content comes out. Um, inside of it, I have all of my IFAC uh, stuff inside of a zip, Ziploc bag, so it stays nice and waterproof. But it also uh, main reason is because it contains all all that stuff as it comes out of my IFAC pouch. So uh, pull it out. Someone uses it on me, I use it on someone, be it whatever. Um, and then if I don't have time to shove it all back inside the pouch, I can just wrap the bag up, put it inside a cargo pocket or something like that. So definitely I really like that IFAC pouch. Um, I, would, I would recommend it uh, if, if, if you're looking at, at one. <clears throat> Next thing over uh, is my MVG or battery pouch. Um, and I think when I, when, well, it's made by LBT, it's called the NVG slash battery pouch. And I think when they say battery, they mean like the 5590s or the 2590s, the like big, like radio battery pouches, um, because it would be perfect to fit that. But it's also sized to fit an NVG insert, which I have inside here, uh, NVG SL3. And then back behind here, I have uh, batteries, uh, four AA's, four, one, four one, two threes. Those are useful for you know your NVGs, uh, optics, be it like your grenade launcher site perhaps if you're a grenadier, um, if you have one of the holographic ones, if not the leaf sites work just as well. Um, but yeah, important to keep your NVGs on you. Uh, you could argue if they need to be on your kit, but I keep them on my kit so I don't have to alleviate the like pulling my MVGs out of my pack before I go on patrol or something like that. They're just always on me. Uh, I would always have positive control o over those things. And you know, I got the triple retention with Velcro buckle and I have a dummy cord inside the pouch to make sure that I never lose them. <clears throat> now coming over to my firing side, I have a knife. This is a Benchmade Nim, uh, Nim Rabus, Nim Varus. I'm not sure how to say it, but uh, it's a really good knife. And I like it a lot, you know, a, a good, a good quality knife is something that every infantryman needs to have. Um, I got this one because it's pretty lightweight. Uh, it also has a really nice blade profile where it'd be good for lots of things, not just like stabbing people. It'd be good for like bushcraft, like making a fire, things like that. Uh, so I, so I really like this one. I've tried a couple other ones and I've been using this one for a while now. So I think I'm going to stick with it. But it just has a standard sheet that it comes with and it works out fine. And that thing is just attached to the belt with the Velcro strap that uh, is on the sheet. And that's good. You know, it allows me to take it off quickly if I need to. Like maybe I'm, I'm ditching my gear and I'm running away. I want to grab my knife first. Absolutely. So I just grab that off and then uh, I'm ready to go. To talk about this though, um, if you're using a M203 or a 320 in the attached to the rifle configuration, then uh, your belt could look just just like this. But if you're using it, or if you're using the 320 in the standalone configuration, mm, that thing usually ends up on your belt. And there's a couple products for it. There's some really expensive ones like the SNS Precision 320 holsters. That you know, it's a holster for a, for for a 320. It just goes right in there. Um, and then there's like some like weapons catch things that are sized for for an M320. Um, those work okay. They're not really very. Uh, they don't really carry the weight of the 320 very well. Um, but the way that I see them used to pretty good effect is the combination of a single point sling that gets wrapped around your body. Some people at attach it to their, to their plate carrier, some people don't, but um, it gets wrapped around your body paired with some sort of retention system down on the belt here. And this is something that you're gonna have to fiddle fuck with, with, with your gear specifically because it's gonna be different depending on how comfortable you are, where you want it, things like that. But what I've seen is um, guys usually take their knife off and they leave this spot open for their 320 to sit against. And then they use a bungee cord or something from the back of the belt to the front of the belt to hold that thing up against the belt. 
And you've got to dial it in a little bit because you want the, the weight of the 320 to be on the single point sling. But you want, you know, the retention to obviously be taken care of on the belt. So it's something that you're gonna have to fiddle fuck with. Some things that I've seen, like I said, in the bungee cord, I've seen the bungee cords that come off the tarp. I've seen guys attach buckles to those. Then they rig them up to their belt, and then they do like uh, they uh, attach like a male buckle to, to the bungee cord, and then they attach a female like split bar buckle up to the front of their belt, and that works pretty well. Um, I've seen that. And you know I've seen the weapons catch things, but guys really don't don't like those very much. Um, it doesn't really support the weight all that well of, of the 320. So that's that. Uh, the last thing on the belt is a tourniquet. Uh, this is a soil eater belt mounted tourniquet pouch V3. Inside I keep a tourniquet and a sharpie. Uh, this tourniquet I keep looped which just means that the end of it is ran through the buckle and back onto itself. Uh, so I can use it with one hand in the event that I didn't have one of my hands. Um, so yeah, uh, that covers the belt. Um, I think this is a 10 times better option than using the, uh, the, the belt that they give you to hold 40 millimeter. Uh, if you watch the next video, you'll see that I still have the same amount of ammo that the belt holds. I just have it way better, way more comfortable, and with the ability to actually put other stuff on my belt, like my NPGs and my IFAC, and tourniquets, knives, and grenades, and things like that, which is, you know, really important to you. And if all of this gear was on my plate carrier, my plate carrier would be a like, total like monkey suit. It would be humongous. Um, and it wouldn't interface well with the rucksack and all kinds of stuff like that. So there's lots of reasons why I think you shouldn't use that if you want to spend the money, right? Um, with weapons, uh, MOSs, being a grenadier, it isn't really an MOS, but with in infantry weapons, sometimes you have to make sacrifices because this stuff isn't given to you sometimes. And uh, if you want to do your job and do it well and effectively and comfortably, then unfortunately you're gonna to have to spend money sometimes. And if you don't want to do that, I'm not gonna knock you for it. I understand completely, you shouldn't have to do that, uh, but that is the reality of uh, how it goes from time to time. So um, with all that out, out of the way, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.